Anya Gorman is going to join us next. First, here's Kieran Cunningham on the Sunday Paper Review talking about how much of a loss Huddersfield bound Colin Bell will be to Irish football. There's very little of it on it in the papers, like a couple of lines here and there, but Colin Bell, the women's manager, has stepped down. He's moving to work on, as part of the background team at Huddersfield, yeah. women's team in England. But in going, he said it was, you know, it was partly related to what's been going on in the FAI yeah. and f f future promises of funding. And this is an indication of what's happened coming down the tracks. You know, with the withdrawal of funding, with uh, sponsors running scared, with th this and all of this stuff isn't going to go away. Like, this story could drag out for a long, long time. So it is going to impact on jobs and on, on, on what's happening at various levels in Irish soccer. And I think we've seen a, a sign of that with Colin Bell, who the women's players rated really highly. Mm. Like, he has a big loss. So yeah. I think yeah. that's a practical illustration of how messy Cost. this is going to get. Anya Gorman is with us now to help us preview the England-USA game this evening. Before we get to that, though, just uh, it would be remiss of me not to ask you about the departure of Colin Bell. Uh, very highly rated by the players is what we're hearing. Was that your experience? Sorry? Was that, again? was that your experience? Um, yeah, like, he came in at a good time, I think I said before, off the back of the stand. stand we made as international players and probably got a lot of resources off the back of that as well. And um, He did have his firmly his own uh, football philosophy as well but I do I honestly think if you look back on the results then um, obviously apart from the, the draw against the Dutch it's it's no more success than, than the previous managers have brought as well so um, while obviously it's really really bad timing for the girls coming up to the European Championship qualifiers uh, that, that's a disappointing factor as well but I think that we just look to have to look ahead now and hopefully the FAI get the right person in to do the job is there an obvious candidate? Because um, there had been some speculation that maybe an internal candidate would get the job and that there was somebody ready to go. Yeah, no, I think it's a hard one to call. I think I said before that they just have to, I think they need to buy their time and, and not just rush into it and make sure they, that they get the right predecessor to take over and, and bring the game forward. And I firmly believe that they, it's a great qualifying campaign and, and they, that Ireland will qualify for the European Championships in England in 21. Yeah, I mean, uh, qualifying for the Euros in England, given that it's on our doorstep, given that so many of our best players are actually playing in England, that would be a, 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 the perfect tournament for us to get to. I mean, obviously, any Euros is going to be great, but the ones that are in England, there'll be huge Irish support. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of really important. Yeah, I think so, and it's probably as close to a home tournament there that we have, as a senior women's team, that we'll probably ever get as well. So, yeah, no, I think it's a massive chance and a massive opportunity, and... Um, uh, hopefully they, that we can make that step now to qualify for the first major tournament and, and then the back end we'll get and the support we'll get and especially off the back of the World Cup as well I think that um, women's football has inherited um, loads of new fans with the, the excellent covers that were to year given on TG Hatter. And so Dave Connell is the, is the favourite to get the job is he should they I mean is he ready for that job in your view or should they actually wait and see if there's anybody else out there? Yeah like I said I think they just need to buy their time and like you have Ireland Gleeson as well in Ireland, who's a pro license holder too. So um, they they just have to wait their time and, and make sure they get the right person into the job. Okay, Anya, talk to us a little bit about what you expect to happen in the England USA game. Obviously, uh, the Americans are favourites by virtue of the fact that they've got a much longer tradition of being successful in World Cups than England do. And yet, look, it's a semi final, so pretty much anything could happen. Yeah, anything can happen. And I think, personally, at the minute, teams are probably, probably on level par, and England probably have a better have had a better run in the games and, and are probably showing a little bit better form. I think the USA have probably been lucky in a good few of their results um, coming up to, leading up to the semi-finals as well. But like the squad both teams have and both teams are going to be fresh enough with the rotations both managers have been, been successfully able to do. Like you have the front three of the USA, Rapino, Morgan up front and then you have the combination of Dunn and uh, Rapino down the left side against Paris and and bronze down the right side for England, which is both probably the two the major strengths of the teams as well. So I'm really looking forward to them. I think it's going to be exciting one, and I don't think I can call it. It could easily go to extra time and penalty. On those specific matchups, who's out on top in your view? Sorry, say again. On those specific matchups that you mentioned there, who comes out on top? <sighs> uh, I'm going to go with bronze and Paris, but I think Paris will have a tough game against Dunn today. Right, it's a big statement because I'd imagine that United States fans are, are looking at uh, the other side of that and saying to themselves, well, we have these here. We have people in those positions who can cause England a lot of problems. But clearly, I guess, when it comes to tournaments, form is such a huge thing and England are bringing piles of it into this game. 
Yeah, I think so. They're probably the more informed team, I'd, I'd say, than the USA. I think the USA hit the ground running, but since then, have just managed to get to get the results uh, they needed to get through to get through the tournament as well. And I think England have probably um, started to peak at the right time as well. And, and there seems to be a great camaraderie in the, in the squad as well. So, like I say, it's a tough one to call. And I think it depends on who turns up and, and who fires on the night. There's been plenty written in the English press in particular about the uh, confidence with which the United States carry themselves. They know that they're good, they believe that they're good, and they like to tell the world that they're good. It's refreshing to see, I guess, from a general a sports point of view. Uh, what's your view on that? Um, yeah, like I think the United States have been at the top of women's football for a long, long time, and um, like it, it's great to see. And, and they're the, num- like, they're the women's team in the United States is more successful than the men's team as well, which is is massive as well and the support they get and I think I read a stat yesterday on the jersey sales of their jerseys is, is probably one of the all time in America as well I don't know the exact um, figures on that as well so, that, so that's massive to see and I think both teams are very confident like England are very confident teams, the USA are very confident team and in their media as well so uh, it just uh, brings up a good tie One of the things about um, the build up to this has been about the style of play of the Americans um, like Quite direct, actually, not not kind of um, passing the ball through the midfield, not really looking to to keep possession. I think the uh, possession starts with the semi final against France. France kind of dominated that game, yeah. but um, obviously that's not they're not in the tournament anymore, and the Yanks are, so they're pretty happy with that kind of uh, very direct style of play. Yeah, it seems to working for for them so far, and it's goals that wins game. That's the only stat that matters at the end of the day, and um, yeah, they are a little bit more direct, and I think. They probably were lucky, like I said, with a few results and a few penalty decisions as well um, to get them through. But um, that's just the winning mentality they have amongst them. But um, yeah, England will probably play play a little bit more football than the USA. But I think they just look to get the, the ball up to their forward players that do the danger as quick as they can. Um, in, in terms of your own career, Anya, you, you stepped away, I think, yeah. uh, quite young from the international setup, despite the fact you had already got 100 caps by the time you were 29. So um, would you be tempted to go back to international football? Um, yes, yeah, so I would be tempted. Um, I suppose I have to see what happens. But if I'm playing well and, and whoever comes in as manager picks me, um, I'd have to strongly consider it. Yes. Yeah. Okay, right. Does that suggest there was an issue with Colin? Uh, that it was it was him that was one of the reasons why you stepped away? No, no. I think I, I was just I've been playing for a long time and had a massive commitment now, and I probably I've obviously I took a step back as well, and and looking at the World Cup and stuff like that probably just gives you a little bit of hunger, but. Like I said, we'll just see what happens and, and who comes in to take over. Okay, so you're, you're keeping your options open. Yeah, that's it. All right, fair enough. Anya, thanks for joining us this morning. Cheers. No worries, talk to you soon. Bye. <laughs> Anya Gorman giving us some thoughts.